Hey everybody, Scott Spritzer here, DocSports.com, and welcome to the update for Monday, September 9th, 2019. We're talking a little Monday Night Football. Two games tonight in just a moment. One of those two games happens to be a free pick for me. We'll get to that. First quick note, if you have yet to become a member at DocSports.com, it is a real cool way to give it a trial run. All you got to do is click on the link below this video, get yourself set up for a free $60 account, and you can use those free $60 bucks on any of my daily packages or any other capper for that matter over at DocSports.com. Simple as that. Click on the link below the video. Get yourself set up for that free $60 account and the DocSports.com guaranteed is included even in this $60 free account. Check it all out. Get started. Click on the link below the video. All right, well, here's what happened for us. Hope you're with us on Sunday. Thanks to those of you who jumped on board because we ended up making a few units. We had the big six-unit play Sunday Night Football on the New England Patriots. They ripped uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers 33-3 easily covering that number and uh, that made us a nice little profit on Sunday. We're now 62, 37, and 2 with our last 101 NFL plays. Been on a heater the last few years in pro football. Mentioned to you before about the uh, Westgate Super Contest top 20 finish we had a couple of years ago where we turned a $1,500 entry fee into about $25,000. So NFL's been really good to us over the last couple of years. We look to continue uh, to win in the NFL. And again, our week two plays, by the way, as you know by now, uh, will be available Thursday, 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Pacific, along with our college football. And uh, again, every single Thursday throughout the course of the football season, college football, NFL, CFL, all available 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Pacific on Thursday afternoons. We'll talk a little bit more about that in our upcoming card this next week in both college and pro football as we get closer uh, to our post times on Thursday. As far as what happened on Sunday for the books, you know, they got cooked with that New England win. I mean, there are a couple of books on the strip that, in Vegas that are reporting six-figure losses. However, as we always say, do not feel too sorry for the guys behind the counter. They normally do well. And the late cover by the Skins and the come-from-behind cover and tie game by the Arizona Cardinals against Detroit really helped out the books. It could have been a lot worse than it was. So uh, they're not feeling too bad about things, although New England did hurt them a bit, not only with the straight bets against the spread on the Patriots, but of course the parlays, the teasers that were all tied into New England that went into that game uh, with the chance to win all were helped out by the Patriots win and cover. So a little bit of a loss, but again, the Skins and the Arizona Cardinals both covering on Sunday certainly did not hurt the books. All right, well, here's what's going on right now over at DocSports.com for me on Monday. And then we'll talk a little bit more about the books. Uh, just one game for me on Monday as far as premium picks are concerned. We're five and one in baseball in the month of September. And I've got play number six seven for September going on Monday. It will be available at 11.30 a.m. Eastern, 8.30 a.m. Pacific time. One play on Monday for Major League Baseball. WNBA, we cashed on Sunday. It was the regular season finale uh, for the WNBA. Uh, the playoffs, though, begin on Wednesday, so just a couple of days off for the league, and then things get underway on Wednesday evening with a couple of games. Uh, we closed uh, the season on a 15-5 and five run last 20, and 41-20-2 and two in the WNBA going back our last 63 plays. We'll be ready to go, and those NBA playoff picks will be available at WNBA playoff picks will be available at DocSports.com, 1 p.m. Eastern Time, 10 a.m. Pacific on Wednesday afternoon. All right, listen, we told you last week we're going to do this every week as we did last year on Monday's videos. We're going to talk about the big movers uh, in the college football uh, games from the opening line to where they are as of late Sunday night heading into Monday, uh, where the Sharps have jumped in on those opening numbers and moved games. There was a ton of them last week. We had a 15, 16 minute video last Monday talking about all the moves and we're going to let you know where all those are uh, this particular week and then we'll get to Monday Night Football. A few notes on Monday Night Betting on the two games and of course our free pick is on one of the two games tonight. Let's jump into college football's opening lines from Sunday for next week, week three of college football and we're talking about those that took some serious sharp action. I told you last week on the videos that the Circa here in Las Vegas, Derek Stevens, of course, the proprietor over there, uh, that they were going to be first in setting opening lines this year in college football. And I'll tell you what, we've seen some major line moves last week and this week thus far after the Circa has posted opening numbers. So here's a few, or I guess I should say the biggest movers and the sharpest action thus far heading into week three. We'll start first with Friday night football. Washington State is at Houston. Now Washington State opened up about a 10-point favorite 
favorite. That number is down to seven for the most part. We know that Washington State's going to be able to move up and down the field, as will Houston. I don't think either one of these defenses will do a lot to slow down the other. And because of that also, we saw that total open 74 and go all the way up to 76. Uh, got to put on the cheaters for a little bit. And uh, listen, Saturday, Maryland, how about the Terrapins? This team has gone from a four-point opening line favorite against Temple up to an eight-point favorite total from 59.5 to 62.5. Here's the thing thus far. You look at what Maryland's doing offensively. They can run the crap out of the football so far through the first two games. I know week one against Howard, you're saying no big deal. 79 nothing, but who cares, right? Well, they go up against Syracuse and they thumped the Orange and pretty much for the most part, a decently coached Orange program. And they put 60 plus on them and beat them by 42 points. And I'll tell you what, as far as Maryland is concerned, because they can run the football, they don't have to play quite at breakneck speed like a lot of these uh, new modern football offenses, but they can when they need to. If you're Temple, you're going to try to slow the pace down a little bit. Last week alone, uh, Maryland ended up with about 82, 83 plays against Syracuse, while the Cuse ended up with just 57. But again, that Maryland line opened four against Temple all the way up to eight, thanks to sharp action on Sunday afternoon and evening. Alabama is at South Carolina. The Crimson Tide opened 21. They're up to 25. Listen, South Carolina plays way too slow for me on offense. I think they had 61, 62 plays in that loss to North Carolina a couple of weeks ago. And I'm not a big Will Muschamp fan, head coach of South Carolina. Good defense of mine. I don't like this offense. It's going to be awfully tough, I think, for South Carolina to hang that number. I know their defense can throw a wrench of the Bama system, but cannot last for an entire four quarters is the issue there. Uh, UNLV at Northwestern, once again, second time in a row. I'm at the UNLV game, both games so far this season. They played against one of the worst teams you're going to see in FCS in Southern Utah opening week. They beat them 56-23, uh, to 23, could have beat them 70-7. to 7. That's not a good program at all. They had, I think, one win uh, last year before getting thumped by UNLV in the opener. But we came back, if you were with me, we had Arkansas State eight. Couldn't believe they opened up a dog to UNLV. Arkansas State opened up two, two and a half. By the time the game kicked off, it was down to one, and they blasted the doors off UNLV. Uh, beat them rather easily, 43 to 17. Wasn't even that close. And here's the problem for UNLV on the road against Northwestern. Can they cover the spread? spread? Well, maybe, because Northwestern might be looking ahead to their game with Michigan State. I will say this, though. If Michigan, excuse me, if Northwestern is able to clamp down on the Rebel running game, which ain't bad, they got to kid named Charles Williams that can fly. But if they can clamp down and slow down the UNLV running game, which they should be able to have focused, uh, then you put the onus of the offense on the arm of Armani Rogers, and he might be the worst passing quarterback in college football. Eight for 23 and a pick last week against Arkansas State. He cannot pass the football. Why he's in a quarterback is beyond me. They got a kid that's uh, backing him up that got a little bit of action last week. Now, if they would make the change at quarterback starting or sometime in the first half, be a little bit nervous about this number. Northwestern has gone from an opening number of 16 and a half up to 20 and a half against the Rebels. Uh, other games that have moved with sharp action, you've got Duke opening three at Middle Tennessee State. They're now six and a half. Uh, what you're going to do here is watch a Duke team with uh, their quarterback who's going to try to run the football, and that's the problem. The biggest problem with Middle Tennessee State is a defense that has a rough time stopping the run. Totally understand Duke going up about a field goal since that number opened. And Oklahoma at UCLA, the Sooners opened 17 up to 21. No shocker with that line move. Uh, you UCLA, I'm going to tell you what, this is a football team that cannot get it going offensively, which sounds odd uh, with Chip Kelly as your head coach. But when you look at the Bruins through a couple of the games, I think they're 127th in total offense, 102nd or 103rd running the football, but 126th as far as passing the football. It's just not happening. They have an inaccurate pa uh, passer themselves, and he's not able to get the football to his running backs out of the backfield, which is one of the big deals for a Chip Kelly run offense and what he wants to do at UCLA. But as far as Oklahoma, listen, they've gone from 17 to 21. As I mentioned, Jalen Hurts putting up monster numbers, and he's really got a chance to pat it, man. Not only in this particular game, if, if they're focused on the task at hand, but also they've got Texas Tech. Tech's pretty good, but I'm not sure that defense, it'll be interesting to see if they can slow down Jalen Hurts. He's also got Kansas on the schedule. He'll pile up a ton of yardage there. So if the Sooners don't slip up at all against an Edu 
something stupid against UCLA, Texas Tech. They won't do something stupid against Kansas. We're going to get real nice value, I think, on the Texas Longhorns. Wasn't crazy about the Texas defense against LSU. You know our feelings on Texas. We think they finish a game under their uh, wins total, which was nine. We think they win eight games in all likelihood this year. Uh, but we could get some nice value. There's going to be a ton of hype on Jalen Hurts. He might be leading the way in the public eye and in the mass media for the Heisman Trophy after he goes through this early portion of the schedule that has to take on Texas. Again, they might be a little bit overvalued, a little bit overhyped in that particular game. So a couple of weeks away, but in this particular game, I can totally understand why the Sooners went from 17 to 21 against UCLA. So as you can tell, not as many giant line moves or sharp big line moves as there were in week two for college football over the circuit, but still you've got a handful of four, four and a half, five point line moves that took place on Sunday, Sunday afternoon and Sunday evening uh, after the circuit opened up their college football lines. Just a couple of quick notes on this week's upcoming college football card. We'll do this each and every Monday, as I mentioned last week. And you know what we do on Tuesdays. We did it last year also. We'll have a complete recap from a betting perspective on each week's NFL. Those will be done on Tuesday's videos and available 5 a.m. Eastern, 2 a.m. Pacific each and every Tuesday. Real quick note also, uh, the numbers on some of the games of interest for you uh, in the NFL for week two, the Ravens, you saw them destroy Miami. Everybody on that Miami roster wants to leave. They're calling their agents asking to go elsewhere. Well, Miami is going to be a 16 point dog when you wake up and watch these videos on Monday after opening up a 14 and a half point dog. And they're anywhere from 14 and a half to 16 as I cut this video overnight into Monday. Patriots, of course, the favorite there. Everybody knows that the Patriots struggle in Miami. It'll be interesting to see if they do so against this horrible football team. Uh, the Packers from two and a half to three over the Vikings. Packers at home in that one. And I did mention the Ravens. They're taking on the Cardinals. Of course, Lamar Jackson got a ton of hype before preseason even began. And then he comes out against Miami and just tears them a new one. Has a fantastic game. His best game as a pro. But, you know, now he's got a chance to pad the stats again. They're a 13-point home favorite against the Arizona Cardinals. Some of the action that I want to to tell you about for week two in the NFL and of course the betting reports for week three in college football. Again, before I get to the uh, Monday night information, real quick note, baseball is on center stage for us on Monday, 11.30 a.m. Eastern, 8.30 a.m. Pacific will be the time that I post my baseball. We got one play over at DotSports.com. We'll look to go to six and one with our baseball plays, uh, premium plays in the month of September. Two games tonight in the NFL. We've got the early game between Houston and New Orleans from New Orleans. Uh, the Saints laying six and a half total 53 listen over half the sharp money is currently on the texans in this one plus the points and that line dropped from seven down to six and a half on sunday during the course of the morning into the afternoon now the texans have only covered three of the last 11 on the road the saints have dropped five straight games in week one against the spread as far as the late game you got the embattled oakland raiders hey man they got rid of antonio brown and this line moved because of all things antonio brown uh, Oakland at one time a favorite. Denver now laying basically two and a half for the most part. Southern Nevada, now there's books all over the country now, of course, but in Southern Nevada, Oakland is normally a popular play, especially two seasons ago over last season and maybe so far going into week one here. Uh, but the tickets have come pouring in with those Raider fans in Southern Nevada. They are just 9-19 and two against the spread the last 30 games overall. Broncos under new management basically, uh, but they are now five and 13 against the spread their last eight on the road. Home team has been the way to go in this series, but again, that number about two and a half. We'll see how the Raiders are between the years after the uh, deal uh, falling through basically with Antonio Brown before he even got started. Now he lands in New England. All right, the free pick. We're going to go back to the early game on Monday Night Football. We're going to grab the points with the Houston Texans over the New Orleans Saints. I think you're going to see better uh, play out of that Houston offensive line this year as they look to protect uh, Deshaun Watson a little bit better. And of course, you know how much, if you've been watching my videos over the last year and a half, you know how much I like the talent of Deshaun Watson when he has time. He's got some offensive weaponry. He's got decent players on the defensive side of the football. But the bottom line for me, not only does New Orleans normally get off to a slow start, 
I mentioned what their uh, spread record is in week one over the last five years. But the bottom line for me is it's just a tad overvalued New Orleans. Uh, we made this number 5.5. You can grab as high as seven if you shop around. A lot of six and a halfs out there, but there are multiple sevens out there at different books uh, around Southern Nevada and around the country. So again, an opinion, a free pick on the Houston Texans plus the points. Shop for that seven. You should be able to find it. Houston plus the points are free pick on Monday. That's a lot to talk about, and we're going to do this again on Tuesday. Now, you know most of our videos every day. We give out a free pick every day, and most of our videos are about five to six minutes in length. This one and Tuesday's obvious little, obviously a little bit longer with our college football opening line report on Tuesdays, or excuse me, on Mondays, and then our NFL recap for the previous week with betting information on Tuesdays. So I hope you like them. If you do, click on that thumbs up button. Be sure to subscribe. I do appreciate those who have done so thus far. I'm Scott Spritzer, DocSports.com. Houston Texans, the free play on Monday plus the points. We'll be right back here Tuesday, 5 a.m. Eastern, 2 a.m. Pacific. Let's put Monday in the win column.